Hi all, welcome back to this third video in complete React Material UI video series where we built an app from scratch by applying Material UI components and concepts to a real world project. In this video, we will create or design a Material UI form with all common input controls like input text box, radio button, checkbox, drop down list, date picker, etc. For form controls, we have created reusable and extendable components. You could use the same best practices from this video for designing your Material UI form. Actually, I don't know how to emphasize the importance of this video in this series, but I'm sure if you are looking for a best tutorial on MUI form, this is it. So please watch till the end of this video. Before starting this video, I would like to thank for your PayPal donations for my previous works. In order to make more helpful and quality tutorials like this, you can also support me through PayPal donation. I have given the link in video description and inside the first comment of this video. So here we have the final project from previous tutorial. In this video, we are going to design a form with validation containing almost all common input controls. For this demonstration, we will be using employee details inside the application. So back to the project here. First of all, let me add a new folder, pages. Inside that, I will have new folder called employees. Now let's add two components inside the folder, employees and then employee form. Now let's define the functional component with this snippet RFC. Now let's do the same for this employees component also. Inside this component we will be dealing with list of employees. We will be doing that in future videos. And inside this employee form here we will design and validate the form. So this employees component will be a parent component for this employee form component. So first of all, let me display this employee form inside this employees component here. Employee form. Let's add the corresponding import statement here. From employee form, we have to import employee form. Now let's show this employees component inside this app component here employees let's import that here we are showing this page header from app component here page header will be different for different pages so let me cut this page header from here and i will paste that inside this employees component here since we have multiple outer element here we have this one parent error here in order to avoid that, we can wrap them inside React Fragment. Now let me change this title here. New Employee. Page description will be something like a form design with validation. Now we have to import this page header and this icon up here. Import statement of this icon is the inside this app component. Let me cut that from here and pasting here. Now back to the application here. So currently we are showing this page header from employees component. Now let's design the form inside this employee form component here. In order to design the employee form, we need a model with all of the employee properties. For that, I will be using the component state object. For that, we will be using React hooks. So mainly, we have to import these two functions here: use state and use effect. Let me explain how these two functions works. If you want to define a component state property here, you could do this constant, and then here we have the tuple. First of all, here we have the state variable x along with that we can have this function set x and we will initialize that by calling the function react function react hook function use state so this is a component state variable x if you want to initialize this variable you could do that by passing the value here let it be something 5 so this state object or variable will have the initial value 5 now this set x is a function which can be used to update the value of x. 
Suppose if you want to update the value to 6, you could do this. Just call the function set x and here we have to pass the updated or new value. So this is how we can define component state object in React hooks. Now with this function use effect, we can define side effects for this uh, state variable here. For that, we just need to do this. Just call the function use effect. For this function, we have two variables. First of all, we will have this callback function. As a second parameter, we can have this array. Okay. Now if you pass this state variable x here, this callback function will be executed whenever the value of this variable changes. If you want to execute something when value of x changes, you could do that inside this callback function here. So that's why we are calling this as a side effect function. So this is how react hook works. Now let's define a state object for the form model. So let it be values. And then here we have the corresponding set function set values now we can initialize that by calling the function use state so this will be an object containing all of the properties for input controls inside the form that we are going to design so the form will be here form inside that we'll be showing input controls for all of the properties inside this values object here now before adding input controls into this form i want to initialize this values object with default values for that i will be defining a property here constant initial field values first of all we have id which is corresponding to the primary key and then here we have the full name email mobile city and then we have gender default value will be male corresponding to this property we will be having a group of radio buttons and then we have department id corresponding to this property we will be having a drop down list containing list of departments inside the company when users select a department corresponding department id should be saved inside this property here after that we have hire date i will initialize that with today's date so we can call this date function here corresponding to this property we will be having a date picker and finally we have this property is permanent for this property we will be having a checkbox so here we have defined all of the properties inside the form with their default values now let's initialize this state object with these default values here so i will pass the object here now let's start adding input controls inside the form here before that let me add the grid here we want to show input controls in Two grid columns so we can add this material UI grid here so this will act as the container inside that we need two grid column we have discussed material UI grid in first video of this series all of the video links before this video and after this video will be there in video description and inside the first comment of the video once they are uploaded we want to split this grid into two halves so XS is equal to 6 now inside this first column here, we need an input control for full name. For that, we will be using this material UI component text field. Inside the documentation, you could see various use of the component here. Inside the application, we will be using this variation here with outlined. So first of all, we have to set this property variant as outlined. And we have to set the label as full name. In order to populate this control value with the default value that we have passed here we have to set this property value we can access that from this state object values here since we have initialized this with the object initial field values so values full name like this we need one more input control for email address also so let me copy paste this control just below email values dot email so here we have the input controls corresponding to full name and email address as you might have guessed if we keep adding rest of the controls like this all of them will be congested like this so we have to add custom css to align them properly we have discussed them in first and second video in depth for that we have been doing this first of all we will be defining a function use style here 
can initialize that with material UI function make styles we will be passing this function with single parameter theme from this function we just need to return an object so we just need this pair of parentheses and here we have the object inside that here we have the style root is equal to an object and we are going to apply this root style into this form component here so in order to apply that we could do this constant classes use styles function can be called now let's apply this root style to this form element here class name classes dot root now with this style here we are going to apply margin and width for these input controls inside the form element in order to identify each of the controls separately we should have a common class applied to all of these controls so here we have the div corresponding to the text field for full name here so this class mui form control hyphen root will be there in all of the controls inside the form so let me copy this class here define a selector first of all we will have this and simple which refers to this parent root here we have discussed them in previous tutorials and inside this parent element if there is an element with this class we will be applying these styles here width is equal to 80 percentage and then we have margin theme dot spacing with one so margin from all sides will be applied with eight pixel now back to the application that's it all of the controls will be shown in different lines with proper margin now before adding rest of the form controls let me add a container for the form otherwise it would be shown as an outsider for this page so let's do that inside the parent component here employees we will be enclosing the form with paper component from material ui we have discussed this component in previous tutorial now you could see the paper component here let's add some margin and padding for this control for that we can do the same like we have done inside the form component use style actually i would like to call this as use styles let's use the same convention across all of the components here so let me rename this use the shortcut press f2 let's update this as use styles hit enter so all of the occurrence of this function will be updated you could see that here now let me copy this from here and pasting here and instead of this rule we'll have this style page content and here we have the styles so first of all we have to apply the margin theme dot spacing of the range 5 and then we have padding spacing of the range 3 now let's create the variable classes we can call the function use styles here now let's apply the class into this paper component class name is equal to classes dot page content sorry we forgot to import make styles here make styles so that's it here we have applied both margin and padding for the control and now back to the form component here now if you check this input control inside the form let me enter some random text in it but nothing shows it's because of this attribute or property value here value inside this input control will be shown as per the property full name so whenever we input values into this control we have to update the value inside this state property full name also for that we can make use of this event on change here we will be calling a function handle input change now let's define this function up here this is a function with single parameter e which is the default event parameter in any html input element now i forgot to add one important property for these input controls here which is name okay now let me add that here name is equal to full name now inside this function we have to retrieve this name property and the value property of this control from this event variable e here for that we can use this destructive syntax like this name and then value we can retrieve this from this event parameter target property 
So inside this property e dot target, we will have the object corresponding to this input variable here. From that, we can retrieve name and value into these variables here. Now let's update this full name property inside these uh, values object here. For that, we can call this function set values. So set values into the function, I will just pass this object. Inside this values object, we have these much properties. And inside this handle input change function, we just need to update the value of the input control from which this on change function is triggered. So I will do this name is equal to value. So this will update the value of that particular property from which this on change event is triggered. Now in order to use the current value of other properties, we can use this separator and then you could pass these values here. So all of the other properties will be using the same value. The value of input control from which on change is triggered will be updated with this statement here. With this syntax, the value inside this name variable will be used here. So it will be full name in case of this input control and rest of the controls will also have this name property. So it will update the respective property. Okay, now let me save this back to the application here. Now let me check whether it is working or not. Yes, it is working. Now inside this component, we have some common codes which can be reused in other forms inside this application also. In that way, we can reduce number of codes we write and it will be helpful for testing purpose also. Let's look how we can separate common codes into separate React hook components. For that, inside this components folder here, I will be creating a new file use form. Now let's define a functional component here. Now let me move this object into this component here. We have to import this react hook function use state. Into this component, we have to pass this initial field values. Okay. Now from this function, we will return an object containing reusable variables or functions. So values, then set values. Now let's call this use form function inside this component here. Use form. Into this, we have to pass this initial field values. And this function returns reusable variables and functions. And we can access that with this destructive syntax here values then set values now let's move this function into this use form here let's return that here handle input change now this form should works as before yes it is now let's move this form component into the file here for that I will be uh, defining one more component here. So RFC, I will name this function as form. We don't need this import statement. Let me remove that. Since we have to export more than one element from this file, we can avoid this default. And when we import them in rest of the files, we have to use this uh, curly brace. So import use form and form now let's create a form element like we have here form now let's use this component here form let me wrap the ender element or grid with this new form now let me remove this previous html form from here now the elements that we have passed inside this form tag here can be accessed inside the component props parameter here. So props and we can show all of those inner child elements like this props dot children. Now we have to apply the custom CSS that we have applied here. So let me cut this from here and paste that here. We have to import this make styles function here material UI core from that we have to import make styles. Now let's call the function use styles here. 
classes is equal to use styles now let's apply the class here class name is equal to classes root now let's remove this classes object from here back to the application it should works as before yes it is working from now onwards we can make use of this reusable course inside this file for designing rest of the forms inside this application otherwise we have to repeat this course in every component with form it could be also helpful when we want to make changes across all of the forms inside the application for example if you want to change the width of input controls you just need to change the width here then it will be reflected inside all of the forms inside the application now let's proceed with rest of the input controls for these controls here we'll be having input controls we have shown them here like this now let me show you how you can have a group of radio button for this gender property here that we can show inside this second grid column here so first of all we should have this wrapper for the control form control inside that we have to show a label for this so form label it will be something like gender and just beneath that we have to show a group of radio buttons for that we have this component radio group you could see various examples on using this control in documentation inside our application we need three radio buttons inside the group in order to show a single radio button we can have this form control label first of all we can set the value here it will be something like male then we can have the control property here inside that you can have the actual radio button for that we can make use of this material ui component radio okay now let me show the label here label is equal to male don't worry with this multiple material ui component for a single property gender we will also move them into reusable components in a bit so here we have the gender male like this we have to have two more radio button so let me copy this and pasting below this is for female and finally we have the gender other for rest of the categories so here we have radio buttons for gender i want to show them in a single line for that we can set this property raw here it is similar to passing true here we can simplify that by just passing raw here now in order to update corresponding property gender when we make selections inside these uh, radio groups we have to have these properties value and on change here so let me copy this and pasting here we need name which is equal to gender so this name should be similar to the property that we have inside the values state since we are applying the value with the name property inside this handle input change here now value is equal to values dot gender now this should works as expected see the default value male is selected here for a single gender property here we have added multiple material ui component here like this we have to add multiple elements for date picker drop down list etc so it would be better to move them into a separate components like we have done for form here it would be difficult to spot a single element from these multiple lines of code here at the top here we have imported multiple elements here if we keep adding input controls like this the list of important elements will be huge so let's look how we can separate these form input controls into separate reusable component inside the application now first of all let me show you how you can move this text field control into reusable component now you may ask why do we want to move this control into a reusable component for this radio group here it's okay because it is using multiple component for a single property but if we convert this into reusable component in future if you have some changes to be applied you just need to change that in one place so let's do that here for that inside this components folder i will create a new folder controls now let's create the component for input controls as input.js now let's create the functional component here 
into this control we have to pass few parameters from the form so we have to have this props parameter here to access those parameters here we can use this destructive syntax here first of all we need name label then value on change event we can extract these from this props here now let me cut this text field from here and pasting here throughout the application we'll be using this variant as outlined and we can access this label from the variable here label name value then on change event function now let's use this component input inside this form here so we just need to do this input select this auto suggestion here so that corresponding import statement will be added at the top but it's added from material ui core this is a control inside material ui which is not what we want we want this input control that we have created inside this project so this is a problem while creating reusable component with general name like input form etc we can avoid this problem for now let me remove this input from here and i will add the exact import statement here Now into this control, we have to pass name as full name, then label, value, then on change function, which is handle input change. Sorry, we forgot to import text field inside this input component here. In order to do that, just place the cursor at the end of this component then use this shortcut hold control then press period then select the auto suggestion that's it back to the application so now we are showing this full name input control from this reusable input component here now let's do the same for this input control also so we can do this input let me remove this text field from here we don't need this variant and we can pass this on change event here now let me show you how you can make a reusable component for this radio group here let's create a new component radio group let's create a functional component with single parameter props let's access all of the properties that sent from our form component then for this radio group we will have an array called items and we can extract these properties from props parameter here before designing the control here let's call this function inside this component here so first of all let's add the import statement here and we have to import radio group and here let's create an array containing gender items it will be an array inside that we have to have objects corresponding to each radio button inside the radio group so here we have the object for mail first of all we have this id property the title mail let me duplicate this two times this is for female and other category now let's use this component radio group here radio group but we have the same problem here also whether it is coming from our custom component here or it is from the actual material ui core package in order to avoid this problem inside this controls folder here i will create one more file controls so this will be an object export controls and here we will define an object like this now let me add the import statement for radio group also now let radio group back to the employee form here now let's remove this import statement here so with this controls object we can minimize that into one so inside the controls folder we have controls object let's import that here 
now we can access that like this controls input now let me copy this and pasting here now we can do the same for this uh, radio group also radio group now we have to add name value and on change for this control also so let me copy this and pasting here along with that we have to pass the label gender let's pass this array gender items inside this property items now let me cut this radio group from here and we can paste that inside this radio group here in place of this label we can use the label that we have sent from the form let's update these properties accordingly name value on change now in order to show these radio buttons inside this form control label we can iterate through this array items for that we can do this items dot map function can be called inside that we have this callback function with two parameters item and the index inside this function we just need to return this uh, form control label so let me copy this and pasting here this value can be assigned from this id property that we have inside the array gender items so we can do this item id in same way let's update the label which is the inside this property title so item title now let's remove these controls from here now let's add missing import statement here we can use the shortcut just paste the cursor at the end of the component then use the shortcut hold control then press space select the corresponding auto suggestion now let's do the same for rest of the components but for this radio group we have to do something different this custom component also has the same name radio group so you can do this we have to import radio group and you can use this alias mui radio group now instead of radio group you could use mui radio group continue adding missing import statement here and finally radio button now let me save this now let's check whether it is working or not here we have an error with import and export does not contain a default export in controls let's check that here so in you know, order to avoid the problem i will define the constant here and at the end we can export that here export default controls now let's check whether it is working or not now back to the application boom now let me show you one benefit of reusable components Inside this form, I want to remove this auto suggestion from previously posted data here. In order to avoid this, we have to set a property inside the form, which is here. We have defined that inside this reusable component. In order to avoid that, we just need to set this property auto complete as off. Now we don't have the auto suggestion here. If we were using direct form element inside these form components here we have to do that in multiple places so this is the main benefit of using reusable components apart from that we can avoid these repeated import statement at the top now let's look how to add drop down list in material ui for that also we are going to create a separate control reusable component here select let's create the functional component here with single parameter props now let's extract all of the properties that sent from the actual form so name then label value on change function options and we have to export these from props before designing the component let's use this component select for that first of all we have to add that inside this controls object here so let's add the import statement here let's add the same here now back to the form here to add the drop down we could do this controls dot select name is equal to department id then we have label as department value is equal to values dot department id on change is equal to handle input change 
Hope you understood the logic behind this function handle input change. We have defined this function inside this use form here. All of the controls, text field, then uh, radio group or radio button or drop down, all of them have same uh, input change parameter that is here E. Inside the parameter we will have the name and value irrespective of whether it is input or radio button or select etc. There are some exceptions for some controls we can discuss that in a bit. Now finally we have to add options. In a practical application there will be a backend API from which we can fetch all of the departments inside the application. To simplify this tutorial just to focus on the material UI concepts I have not used any specific backend API like ASP.NET Core or Node.js etc. So for saving data inside the application we will be using local storage. So to fetch data like this we will be creating a service class. So let's do that here. I will be creating a new folder called services. Inside that we can have this employee service. For now I will just define a function with hard-coded array of departments. So we can call this function as get department collection. In a practical application you will be accessing these data from the backend API. So here is the function inside that we just need to return this array. So here we have four departments with their proper ID. Now let's call this function inside the form component here. So first of all let me add the import statement at the top. Inside the service file here we will be adding multiple functions to fetch data from the backend or data storage. So I will be importing all of them as employee service here. Now we can call that function here employee service get department collection. Now let's design this component select here. First of all we have this form control variant is equal to outline as per the MUI documentation here you could see various uh, drop downs or select controls that we can have with the package. Inside our application we'll be having these types of um, uh, drop downs with outlined like we have done for text field or input controls. For showing label we can have this uh, control input label inside that we can have this property label. Now we can show the select control from material UI. Actually here also we have the same problem select which is similar to the custom component here select. So we have to use a custom or uh, alias for this control. So we have to import select and we have to import that as MUI select. Now let's use that here. Now let's pass all of those name label on change event etc. We have to add the label property that we have already added here for the proper alignment for this control. We have to add the same label here also. So label is equal to label. Now let's add the select control options here. Menu item. First of all we will have this default option none. Sorry here we have a type of with on change. Rest of the options are there inside these options. So let's iterate through them. Sorry we have to use options. I hope I have passed the same from this form here. Yes. Options dot map function can be called. Inside that we can have this callback function with single parameter item. From this function we just need to return menu item here. Value is equal to item dot id. Now inside this option we can show the title item dot title. Now we have to do one more thing. When we render a collection of data from an array like this we have to add key property to this element here. So key is equal to and it should be a unique value. So we can use the id that we have applied for the value here. So item dot id. We have to do the same for this radio group also. Let me copy this and pasting here. Key is equal to item dot id. 
actually we don't need this index here so let me get rid of that from here actually here we have a type of with department sorry department id now let's correct the same here also let me save this and back to the application boom so here we have added the material ui drop down list with all of the options that we have passed now if you inspect this application here you could see a rare error here find dom node is deprecated in strict mode actually this is an error inside material ui library function which is using this function find dom node which is outdated or deprecated in strict mode to avoid this problem we can remove this strict mode inside our react application which is the inside the root javascript file index.js let's remove this strict mode from here now it should work as expected let me check the console here now we don't have any such deprecated error now let me give you a small challenge here let's try to create a reusable component for this checkbox property is permanent here for this hard date we could show a date picker for this hard date in a bit before that let's try to show a checkbox for this is permanent property here you could see various examples on using checkbox component from material ui here let's pause this video and try that on your machine how did it go let me try the same inside this project here for that we have to create a component checkbox in here let's create the functional component with a single parameter props define the properties for this component name label on change value and we have to extract these from these uh, props here first of all we have to have this component form control inside that we can have this form control label inside that we can specify the control for checkbox so control is equal to we can pass the component checkbox from material ui since both of them have same name we have to use alias here so checkbox as mui checkbox let's use that here mui checkbox now let's pass rest of the properties here first of all we have name color i will set the color as primary instead of value for checkbox we will be having this property checked we can set that with the property value now we have on change event here in here for now i will just pass this function on change and finally inside this form control label here we have to pass the label so label is equal to the label that we have passed from the form now we have to add this checkbox inside the controls object here so first of all let me add the import statement here let's add the same checkbox here now back to the employee form we can add that here controls checkbox now let's pass those properties is permanent let me copy that from here then label it would be something like permanent employee then value values dot is permanent now let's pass this on change event now back to the application now let's check whether it is working or not so here we have the checkbox that we have added now let's try to check this checkbox here it's not working let's inspect that here you could see this error invalid props checked off type string supplied it's because of this on change event here into this on change event inside the checkbox we have passed this handle input change this function handle input change expect an event parameter with these values name and value inside this target property here in case of checkbox on change event parameter e there will not be this property value inside this object here 
instead they will be checked property so inside this component checkbox here we are going to format that event parameter into this format here containing this target property with this property name and value for that first of all we are going to define a separate function here convert to default event parameter for this function we have two variables name and value from this function we just need to return an object with single property target inside that we have to have two properties name which is equal to name that we have passed into this function here the same can be achieved by passing just the name here and value here now we will call this function before passing the event parameter into actual function handle input change here so here we have the default event parameter we can call the on change event it will be handle input change function that we have passed from this uh, component here inside this we could call this function convert to default event para first of all we have to pass the name then property corresponding to the value which is the inside this property checked let's check whether it is working or not yes now it is working without any error if you have tried this challenge like i have asked you might have done everything right except this on change event here finally let's look how we can create a date picker for this property hat date here for that let's create another component here date picker and here is the functional component as per this mui documentation here you could have this native date picker using this text field by passing this type as date here inside this application will be showing date picker like this for that we have to install this package here this package documentation is here i have given this link in video description first of all we have to install this package so let me copy this installation command from here let me open one more terminal here let's paste that here hit enter so here we have done with the main package installation along with that package we also have some dependent package here now let's install these packages make sure to include this version number here which is a condition for main package which has the major version number three that is what is mentioned here now let me copy this installation command from here let's paste that here hit enter so we have done with all of the installations i have given this link in video description let's design the date picker here first of all we have to have this main component mui picker utils provider let's add the corresponding import statement at the top material ui pickers and we have to import mui pickers utils provider sorry here we have a typo let me correct that now into this component we have to pass this property utils into this we have to pass this uh, function date functions utils which is from this dependent package so let me copy this and let's add the importing statement here date function utils now before adding rest of the components let's add the props parameter for this component and let's extract the variables that is passed from the actual form so name label value on change event function and then we can assign this with props now inside this component we can have this keyboard date picker make sure to import this here first of all we have to disable the toolbar then variant will be inline you could check these properties description inside the official documentation input variant as outlined and finally we have the label now let's add the format for the date first of all we will have the month then date then year now we have the name then value and here is the on change event now let's pass this on change event function here we don't need a separate close tag so let me remove that from here now let's use this date picker inside this employee form before that we have to add this date picker into this object here controls
so that's it i will add the date picker just above this checkbox so controls dot date picker now let me copy paste these properties from checkbox let me copy this name from here height date label will be height date let's update this value also height date now for this date picker also for this on change event we can't expect this type of format for this event parameter now in order to do this conversion we have to have a function like we have done inside this checkbox so let me copy this and pasting that inside this component here so here we have the parameter from this event we have to call this function convert to default para into this we can pass the name from this property name instead of value there will be a property date for the selected date so actually this on change event of this date picker will be returning a date so that should be passed here let me save this back to the application let me select a date from here okay it is working fine while selecting a date from this picker you could see at the same time we have changed this date here with the help of on changed event so that's all about date picker now just beneath this email control here we have to add two more input controls for mobile and city it will be inside this force grid column here so let me copy this and pasting here twice first of all we have mobile and then we have city so city let me save this back to the application here now we have completed with input controls inside the form now we have to add two more buttons for submit and reset operation so first of all we'll be adding a reusable component here button and here is the functional component for this component we have this single parameter props now inside this mui documentation here you could see the various examples on using the button commonly used properties of buttons are variant color and then size to most of the buttons inside our application will be filled with a background color so we'll be using the variant content if you just want to have this outline here you could use outline variant and you could apply background colors like primary secondary then the default color and for this size property valid options are small medium large first of all let's extract the values that is passed from the component so first of all we have the text which is to be shown inside the button then size color variant on click event function and we have to extract these values from this props here now let's use the material ui component button here since it has the same name as that of this component here let's use an alias name so here is the import statement we have to import button as mui button and now let's use this here variant is equal to now let's apply these properties here and inside this button we can show the text now let me save this and back to this employee form here we have to show both submit button and reset button in a same row for that we can enclose them with a div like this sorry we forgot to add this button into controls object here first of all here we have the import statement let's add the same here back to the employee form now let's use that button here so controls button first of all we will be showing the submit button so we have to set this variant as contained then color as primary size will be large and finally we have the text it will be submit now back to the application let's look whether it is working or not so here we have the submit button 
Now we can simplify some extra works for this button here. Throughout the application, most of the buttons inside this application will be having the variant as contained. So we can define the default value here with the help of this operator or operator. Then I will pass this here. Okay. And we can remove that from here. So if there is no value passed for this variant inside the props, then it will be using this value here. Instead of single pipe operator, you have to use double pipe here. Like this, let's configure default values for rest of the properties here. By default, size will be large, then color will be primary. Now we can remove these properties since we are using the same default value here. Let me save this back to the application. Yes, it works fine. If there are properties other than these properties here, we can access that with this other property here. Actually here we are using destructive syntax from JavaScript. These properties will have the value if the corresponding property is there inside these props. The rest of the properties will be there inside this object other. To apply those properties inside this other object here, we could do this. We can just use this separator and pass other here. Now let me show you how you can pass the same from this form employee form here. Here we have a submit button. But if you inspect this button, the type of this button is button. This property is from HTML button. So we want to change this into submit. For that, I could do this type is equal to submit. Actually, this type property is not there inside this component button here. This property type can be accessed through this other property here and that will be separated here. Now let's check whether it is working or not. Now we have the type as submit. In this way you could extend the properties or attributes passed to this reusable components here. You could do the same with these other properties for the reusable components that we have defined before. Finally, let's add a reset button here. So let me copy this and paste it here and the text will be reset. I want to change this button color that can be passed with this uh, property color here. So color default. Okay, so here we have the buttons for submit and reset operation. Now let's add some padding in between them. We can do that inside this reusable component itself. Most of the time we need that margin. So I will define this style here. Use styles. We can call this function make styles. Inside that we have this callback function. From that we just need to return this object. For styling these components, I will be using classes attribute instead of class name. I have discussed that in previous tutorial, okay? Because with the custom style, I just want to add a margin for the root element here. I also want to remove this upper casing of the button text. So it would be better to use the classes attribute. So I will do that here. First of all, we will have the style root for the margin. Margin is equal to theme dot spacing of the range 0.5. So it's like 0.5 into 8, so 4 pixels. And just beneath this, we have the style for label. So label is equal to, we just need to remove that upper casing. So you could do this text transform is equal to none. Let's call the function here. Classes is equal to use styles. Now let's apply the same here. Classes is equal to, we need an object. Now we want to target rules applied to this MUI button. You could see that inside this documentation here. Just go through the API documentation here. Under CSS section, you could see the rules applied to the element. So this root style will be applied to the outer element. And we want to apply this text transformation for the label. So we want to focus this rule here uh, label. So root is equal to classes dot root. Then label is equal to classes dot label. 
okay let me save this back to the application boom that's it so that's all about this video guys in this video we have designed a material ui form with all of the commonly used controls by applying some best practices and reusable components i was expecting i could cover the form validation inside the same video but if i do that this video will be much longer so i will be covering that in next video so in next video we will be covering validation form as a whole and also we will be doing single control real-time validation also and we will be submitting this form to save these records into local storage if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this please be subscribed to this channel code of action please share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this have a nice day bye